Hello, it's Matt O'Leary, and I've been missing for like two or three weeks from these videos, from these reviews. Uh, that's because my wife and I just bought a house, so it's a pretty exciting time. We're doing some painting, we're doing all sorts of projects, you know, everything that goes into that process. Uh, but today I'm back with an up-and-coming math rock band from California, pretty aesthetically gifted. Oh, do you like them too? I'm just really excited to turn you guys on to this one. It's the band Covet with Effleress. And this band's been at it for a few years now, releasing the second most popular album named Currents from 2015. They even had a cool Audio Tree live session, which you should definitely get your eyes and ears on. But everything with Covet's just been bubbling up in the cauldron leading up to this debut full-length album, Effleress. It's just nice to say, Effleress. Effleress. Covet's main songwriter is the multifarious talent of Vet Young, who's been an up-and-comer in the scene for a while, probably best known for impressive tapping technique. And like I said, Young is not only a guitar hero, but she's also a visual artist and actually drew this beautiful cover. So you know someone's got it all going on. If you think of a math rock instrumentation spectrum, with one extreme being the very bizarre, the very experimental, like a band like Terra Melos. And on the other side, the other extreme, that tried and true light noodly math rock formula of like the band Toe, Covet is definitely closer to the latter. There's definitely some tonal experimentation and production flair on Effleress, but it's mainly made up of the nuts and bolts of math rock. You know, squeaky clean guitar, meandering bass line, swift and agile drums. This album from the get-go is easy breathing easy, beautiful. The opener Shibuya has some instantly sticky riffs and, and features the Dutch producer San Holo. I love that glossy jam section in the middle with that modulating, ethereal finger picking, contrasted by that much sharper, almost cello-like distorted droning. The drumming is very musical all over this album. What I mean by that is it's often rhythmically playing off the guitar parts like the like the cymbal work on this song. And even with a Vet's insane finesse on the frets. It feels very balanced. It feels like everyone in the band is really listening to each other. Instead of focused on adding their own little flair, you know, there's certainly no shortage of that, but it feels like the ensemble comes before the individual. Some of the most technically impressive playing comes on the album's longest track, Falcor, which isn't quite a never-ending story coming in at just under eight minutes. A subdued but temporally challenging opening riff leads in and out of these staccato sections which are very crisp, very on the surface, you know, that uh, that razor sharp kraut rock drum tone, into these more washed out, dreamier sounds which it's as if the band is drifting in and out of these slow lilting waves going under and then rising to the surface again. I love that, that middle section that's mainly in 5-4 where the drums and bass give us a little more intense intensity and it all culminates into this uh, beautiful high syncopated bass line that just crushes. Covet blends the warm and inviting tones of a band like Via Luna or, or Floral. Uh, with the instrumentation and the tapping heavy sound of Chan. And speaking of Chan, which I think most fans will hear right away in Covet's music, Mario Camarena has a signature, just classic, characteristically baller solo at the end of Sea Dragon, and boy is it tasty. This guy is a hot feature right now. He was on that Mouse on the Keys song this year, and he just shreds it up as usual on this song, just ripping sweeps for a couple measures with the drums just blasting. And if you listen to uh, other loopy math rock bands like uh, Totoro or um, like one of my favorite bands, Light, uh, it's definitely less stuttery, it's a little bit less punk influence than that, and uh, more smooth for sure. There's almost more of an ambient influence on a song like Gleam, but I don't feel like they particularly excel at this sound as much as they do at the herky-jerky math style. There are times when this polished tone alone loses me a little bit, like on Gleam, like on 
uh, the song Glimmer, uh, where it just feels a little bit lackadaisical, it feels a little sleepy, but the consistently interesting writing and, and instrumental interplay keep these songs from, you know, floating off into the horizon. Zeppelin rules! There always seems to be an odd chord change or something that keeps me on my toes. Or a dynamic shift that's really cool, like at the end of the closer, howl. And these are the compositional details I think Covet really has going for him. I'd love to see him experiment a little more even with uh, production and tone on future releases and you know just get a little quirkier or uh, add some more vocal parts just to, just to mix things up like Chan did on their last album or uh, like Toe does pretty well like especially on their last album Hear You which I actually have right here but you know Efflores has that very Southern Cal beach vibe aesthetic it's very consistent in its identity and this is one of the better named albums I think Efflores you know among other things means reaching an optimal state of maturity or development and it really feels like the band is blossoming on this album or at least watering a seed you know there might be some more fruit to bear for covet yet but this was a thoroughly enjoyable 8 out of 10 for me all right that is it for covets efflores definitely do not miss this album and as always thank you so much for watching